Hey guys, I'm going to, um, Michelle's here, so we'll just wait for Eve. I'm going to add Michelle on. Hey, Hello. can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay. How can you hear me? Good. Awesome. Hi everyone. Hey everyone. Just... I can't, I can't see anything in the chats or anything like that. Uh, oh really? Oh wait, I see it now. Yeah. Hey, Comments. yeah. yeah. So we've got Rich, we've got Amina here, yeah, Gun Metals here, Nick Perfume Dangle, Time to Musk Up. I don't actually know their name, but Time to Musk Up. Thank you for joining. Some usual suspects. Yeah. Hi, Rich. Hey, everyone. We're still at technically a little bit early. How yeah. are you, Michelle? Good. I just want to make sure I don't have any audio problems like the last time. So. It sounds perfect, actually. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -mm -mm. All right. While we're waiting for Eve. Oh, here she is. I'll just add her. Hello. Hey. How are Hi, you today? Eve. Good. How are you? Good. Good. Nice to see you, too. Nice to see good. you. So f first, before we get started, everyone can hear and see um okay if there's any issues let us know but i can see michelle and eve perfectly fine and i can hear you both and then um maybe we'll just give everyone a second hey hey all oh, the devil sent me here hey chat oh we have people from all over yeah yeah, yeah. some people uh I did get a couple of messages from people in Europe saying they're going to try and stay up very late to watch, wow. but they can wow, always nice. watch. <laughs> they can always watch the replay. Yeah. Um, all right. So, just as an introduction, in case it wasn't obvious to everybody, uh, we are going to try and do a live review of El Atirim um, by Serge Lutan now. Michelle, you actually have a bottle of this, don't you? Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. So you don't like it. <laughs> no, I don't. I really hate it. <laughs> uh, uh, but oh, no. some, yeah. The cool thing is that we don't know how feel how Eve feels about it. So that's going to be a surprise. <laughs> yeah, I kept it a secret. So Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting, all right? So I sprayed this on last night because I I thought to myself, I should actually smell this before before the <laughs> review. But it had, but it has been like maybe a couple of months since I last wore it. So I've I've worn. So this is my decant. So I've used all of that up, and there's a little bit left. Um, so I've worn it several times, but I hadn't smelled it for quite a while until last night. So I've got when I was smelling it last night, it was pretty interesting what I was getting for it because I'm because I've paid attention to it a bit closer for the first time um so i'm wondering how we should do this because we guys we haven't pre-planned or discussed how we would format this um review but i'm wondering between the you between you two uh if you want to start off maybe describing what you get in the opening of this perfume and we'll just keep it organic and we can go from there Okay, I'm, gonna I'm just going to spray some, some on. Over. Yeah. Oh, and I got mine from Michelle, actually. We did a bit of uh -huh. a sample swap. So thank you so much. I was well, very grateful for this. Eve, my, mine came from um, Vivi, Vivi Smack. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think I think she may have a, a, bell, um, a bell bottle like Michelle. Mm. So the the one thing that I actually just recently started getting from this is some citrus, maybe like uh, something that feels like orange, um, which I never got before. I can kind of uh, see that. Well, it might be, I didn't get, I didn't think of specifically orange, but it was interesting when I smelled the opening of this. I. You know how the listed notes, I, I don't know if you guys had had a look, but the the listed notes have um, dried fruits as one of the accords in there. But to me, it it was fruity, but it smelled more like um, like a fruit 
liqueur than actual dried fruit. So there was a bit of booziness on my on my skin from that. I can see how you would get the orange though, Michelle. It's got that that um, warmer kind of fruity citrus, yeah. doesn't it? Yes, yes, it does. Also a little sparkly too. So when I first sprayed this, um, the main note that I got was not quite the dried fruit, but almost like um, an apricot oil, which is something uh -huh. I get from them blonde. So they're not the same, but um, I actually had a decant of them blonde from uh, Vive Smack. And um, to me, it, they almost smell like really distant cousins. Like there's that common thread, but um, they're, they're very different. And it's a bit of that apricot oil that I get from this one. Yeah, there's yeah, definitely, I... definitely the apricot, you know, like almost peachy also. It's really good. And, and, we, and apart from that, so I noticed that in the opening and then, and then you can't escape, well, I can't escape the fact that there is like a noticeable cumin note here. Yes. Um, but I, I mean, generally I like cumin in fragrance and, and I can, I feel like I can pull it off on my, on my skin. But um, what I really like about this is that one thing I really love about Serge Luton is that usually the ones that I really like are just perfectly balanced. And I love how the savory kind of, sweaty spices are balanced with the sweetness of the the fruits here um and so like I, I made a note on my phone when i was smelling it saying how it is like there's this kind of fine line where i'm so addicted to going back to smelling this but there is something a little bit almost repulsive about it at the same <laughs> at the same time it's yeah. like balancing you know sure. um like those sweet fruits with that real cumin boy stank, you know, like. Yeah, that's the other, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, that's, I was gonna say, um, it's been a while, before I bought my bottle, it'd been a while since I smelled it too, but I also had some decans, but I always kept going back to Araby, which had that very, it's very, it has a lot of cumin in it. And sometimes it's, it's very challenging to wear. So I was kind of, uh, trying to remember what oh, Atarin smelled like. And I just like, you know what? I remember really liking it. So I'm just going to get one. It was during mm -hmm. the sale. And um, it's it's not as, the cumin isn't as pronounced as it is no. in Araby for me. Um, it's very, like, it's very balanced. Yeah, the, the cumin, uh, that's the other main note that I got from this. And um, if you've seen my videos, you might know that I'm not a huge fan of that note. Um, so at first I was like, oh crap, like this is the <laughs> body odor stink. But, um, but as it dried down though, it, it's kind of similar to what the cumin does in Fleur d'Oranger where it really adds that body to it. And um, I think that kind of does the same thing here. And I, when I realized that it, it really grew on me, it took me a while, like a couple hours, but um, I ended up really enjoying this. I, I I have smelled out of bee before, but it, it was a long time ago. And when I first smelled this and looked at the note pyramid, I, I wondered how similar it would be. And I and I remember liking out of bee, but I really like this actually a bit more. This one took me by surprise only because I'd never I'd never actually heard of it until I got the, the sample. Um and when I sprayed it for the first time, not even really expecting knowing what to expect it was instantly addictive um yeah. although i'm i'm not entirely sure i would i'll be hunting a bottle down i mean maybe if something came up and it was a really good price I, I probably would but um and and the other thing i made a note of when i was talking about um the balance between you know just being a bit off and and sweet it feels like this is this perfume is like really a perfumista perfume, like uh, th that. You know, in terms of mass appealing, would it, it, there probably be a lot of people who'd smell this and not and not like this? I would agree with that. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, I actually saw a comment from Vives back in here. I think she said that uh, your formulation pep is from the old, the yeah. old bottle. Yeah, yeah, I saw that comment too. So I'm kind of curious. Um, I know, I forget who I was talking to about it. Um, and I remember them saying that there hasn't been that much difference between the formulations. But again, mm -hmm. I'm still kind of curious to see what it was like. She, she's she got a pretty good collection from what I can tell. <laughs> and she's very generous. Um, I was wondering, do you, does this change much on your skin as it dries down? It got sweeter as mm. maybe five hours later. Um, yeah. I was still smelling it quite strongly on my skin, but it got sweeter and the cumin was, it went more into the background for me. Yeah. Yeah. For me, yeah, it, it's, it, almost stayed the same but just like eve it got sweeter too and then i started getting some white florals i'm not oh. sure um maybe I, I usually i wear like unscented lotion so it's not it's not the lotion but i get like something that's almost like maybe jasmine um or just some kind of white floral yeah that's i I, I I didn't get that, but um, I agree with the su getting sweet a bit. What um, when I was looking at the note pyramid, I noticed that um, there they have a note everlasting flower, which presumably is the same as immortel because that's just another name for it. But I couldn't smell it um, in like very strongly in the early stages. But it was really interesting because. I sprayed this on maybe at about 9 p.m. last night. Um, and when I woke up this morning, I could still smell it on my skin, but all I could smell was Immortel. Um, and it was, and I recognized it straight away because I'd been wearing um, an Immortel perfume earlier earlier that day. But um, I, it's it's got really good lasting power on my skin, although it doesn't really project that strongly on me. Right. I don't I don't know. How did you guys find it? Oh yeah, it stays really close um to my skin too. And yeah. does it last does it last a long time? Yeah, it does. Um I usually put mine in it like a small little spray bottle and spray it too. So that does because I notice when I whenever I dab it it's more it's really close but when I spray it on it I guess it just kind of like evaporates more and then you know smells yeah. Projects more. Yeah. After about eight hours, I would say, um, it does become a bit of a skin scent on me. Um, usually with the Serge Luton's, it tends to last a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, but what was left on my skin after eight hours, it was more of like that hint of the maple syrupy um, aspect I get from Immortel. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I didn't get so much of the curry type of smell from it. No. I, I got I got all anything resembling curry is all in the beginning for me and yeah. and even that is offset by that by the sweet fruits as well that's all that sweet booziness that I get on my skin, but look over, overall I think this is actually a really beautiful really interesting fragrance in that kind of um, that that spicy genre um, and like I said I, if I found a, re a cheap bottle somewhere I would definitely grab it but um yeah. with with these bell jars especially here in australia they're just too difficult too expensive um yeah. Yeah. for me to try and hunt down maybe when i finally yeah. get to europe guys and <laughs> i can i can go in there and buy one yeah i don't the, even know are, they, are, are these still available actually michelle like they're still on their website yeah i just ordered it in november yeah. oh okay yeah, okay so it's still available and the, and this one was really special to me and that's why i ordered i had to get one for myself yeah. it was, and it was 20 percent off too so you know yeah you can't pass it up <laughs> um so huh. so viv smack is asking because i think i mentioned the first time i smelled that i smell that it re there are aspects that remind me of Al Oud from L Latisson, and I think that's mainly coming from the cumin and the dried fruit. So that perfume has those similarities, but that one that one is a little bit sharper. And I think whatever they they're using in that perfume as an oud accord gives it this kind of. I think that one's a bit more 
um, what's the word to describe? This, this uh, Al Atadin has a softness for me compared to Al Oud. Al Oud is a bit, just has sharp more right. sharp, e sharp mm. edges. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, I can, I, they definitely remind me of each other. They're not the same, though. They're not. Um, um, Ashfaq like asked an interesting question uh, let, regarding let the me name. scroll. Um, is it this? Yeah. Oh, Do okay. you guys smell uh, sandalwood in the base? I don't. I can't say that I do. Even not, nothing that screams this is sandalwood to me. Yeah. yeah. I smell um, some woody notes, but it's more green. So mm. I, I don't. I you know I'm thinking probably um, cedarwood. Um, I'm not. I you know. It's hard to tell really with everything else that's going on. Yeah, I think I agree with you on that. Um, I probably couldn't tell you the wood, uh, but the closest one I could probably think of is, like you said, cedar wood. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to agree, time to musk up. Al wood, I think, is heavier on, on the cumin compared to al atarin. Um, do, you, do you two have anything else to add to? Um, what you guys smell in your experience with this perfume? So um, with me, my first experience with um, Serge Tons in general was in Morocco when I visited in 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was like, an it, it was, I didn't plan my trip. I just kind of like figured out what I wanted to do every single day. And one of the things that popped up was the his Riyadh in Marrakesh. Um, and it was really expensive. So I was like, I'm just going to save my money. And I started looking the brand up, the house up. Um, initially, you know, before I'd heard the name, I just didn't know he made perfumes. Um, and then I wasn't really like into perfumes like I, I am now. So um, the first one that I ordered was Shargi because El Atarim was just so expensive. I couldn't get a sample. And then eventually I found a sample. So I have that connection with it in that way because it just really reminds me of um morocco in general especially the spice markets all the fruits the spices all of that stuff that's such a wonderful scent memory yeah yeah when you when you have a, such a, a strong association like that i can understand why he'd you'd be getting a, a bottle <laughs> a bottle of it yeah. um yeah. And what, uh, any thoughts on, I, I think this is completely, you know, non-genderless, if, if you like yeah. it. Like, it doesn't, I don't think yeah. it, it is in any way, it wouldn't give anyone reason to say this is too masculine or too feminine. I think it's, like, straight down. Like I said, I think I think a novice to perfume might smell this and go, what the hell am I, yeah. am I wearing? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I think it's just beautifully made, and I and I agree with someone who made who made a comment earlier. I think I tend to sort of lean towards Christopher Sheldrake being one of the best perfumers who who makes perfume at the moment. Yeah, yeah, he's probably the only one that could make me appreciate cumin this much. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and because of this fragrance, I tried a lot of cumin scents too. Um, uh, and they. You know, it's it's it is challenging for me because you know depending on how it is it's made it turns a different way. Um, I know uh, I think it's Aziad Aziad by Parfum Saint Pierre. Yeah. It's it, it, the first thing I smelled was cumin. It was it stayed that way. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't handle it. Although it's a great scent, I just struggle with cumin in general. But this is the one that I can actually wear. I, I love it in um, MFK's Absolute Pola Suave. It's like offset oh. with with honey, and yeah. um, it, I never I never smell that and go, "Ooh, like yeah. it's too much." It's just gorgeous. Um, so Gunmetal is asking if either any of us have ever smelled real uh, Immortel flower. Oh, no, um, I I only recognise Immortel because you know I've smelled different perfumes that feature Immortel and I recognize the same the the same accord in, in each of them and and I make an assumption that this is what Immortel can smell like in different uh in different yeah. perfumes. But I hopefully will be getting some actual Immortel um material, raw material to to smell very soon. Yeah, I haven't either, but it's it's 
one of the notes that really intrigues me so much because it does different things in different perfumes and uh, most times it's actually hard for me to detect that it's in there, uh, yeah. which kind of makes it more interesting and just piques my curiosity. But I'd love to smell like, you know, like an absolute or something. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully if I do, yeah. Um, uh, let's see if we've got, hi. Oh, Making a Stink is on. Hello. Hi, guys. Anyone hey, that's guys. doing Hi, JW. Um, yeah, Heliquism Oil, Everlasting Flower. Um, so I do, yeah, I got, I, I do know um, one person through Facebook and Instagram who actually um, m makes it and they're based in Europe. And once mm -hmm. once they can ship to me because of COVID and everything, I think I'm going to get some some of it um, to smell, which is which will be really good. Um and I think um, overall, I think we're going to give uh, a positive review to El Atarin. Do we agree? Yeah, yeah I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. definitely, I definitely <laughs> recommend. Any, I definitely recommend anyone um, sample it and smell it and see and see what you think. Yeah. Um, so I think we had discussed only very briefly before today's live what we might want to talk about after we're done with the review. Um, and we didn't go into any great detail, but uh, obviously for the people who are watching today, um, if you've got any questions, ask them and I'll try and keep track of it while while the other two talk. Um, but we did, we did maybe bring up the possibility of talking about um, why people get so upset when you post a negative review. <laughs> Of a perfume, and and it made me think immediately. And I'm glad I'm glad um, making a stinky on. I don't know if Chris, if it's Chris or, or I think it's both of them. Yeah, yeah. hi guys. Um, they did their MFK video um, not too long ago, and reading through the comments, like I, I, it really, I, my my personal theory is that I think people who like something. Um, where that you review negatively take it almost as an insult to their personal taste and you're attacking attacking them personally um it's just so strange to me because like i you know i i have perfumes that people hate or don't like and i don't give a shit what they think about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah me neither i, I don't care it just makes yeah. it even better I'm like you know i guess less people like it <laughs> Yeah, but I'll, I'll tell you something interesting, guys. I can guarantee that if I post a negative review or a less than positive review on my channel, it tends to get, well, it never gets anywhere near as many likes as a positive review. Just, I, I don't know if there is any correlation to that, but then there, I, underst I can understand why YouTubers, especially YouTubers who are more intent on, growing the channel, getting more views, are reluctant to post negative reviews because I, I guess is that thing that they want to make everyone happy. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I mean, I, I don't think I've posted any negative things, but it's just because I don't keep them. Um, mm. And I just kind of like, it, it, it usually starts with a sample and I get rid of it and I just forget about it. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think regarding the lower number of likes, uh, part of it might also be like, I know when I was still trying to get into perfumes, I was trying to look for recommendations of good perfumes. And so um, to me, like sometimes if a review was negative, I would appreciate it, but it, I would also think, well, that wasn't something I was looking for. So I'm gonna move on to another video. So I don't know if that kind of feeds into that. Um, but I think you also make a good point, Pep, about how uh, I think people do get personally attached to their perfumes and they might also see it as an insult to their personal taste uh, rather than thinking of it as, well, this perfume didn't work for me. It might work for someone else and it might suit someone else's taste. It doesn't mean that I think my view is you know, more superior to yours. Right. 
And, you know, and I, I actually do appreciate negative reviews too, because I mean, you know, feedback, because some things that people don't like, I like, or I just might find more interesting. So. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I saw uh, Amina's comment. Uh, yeah, I would, <laughs> I would agree with her on that. <laughs> I should have left yeah, it up a moment, man. <laughs> what did you um, say? Uh, let me see. Do you remember what, you, what it yeah, was? Yeah, people um, need to get over themselves. Just because <laughs> someone doesn't like what you like doesn't mean that they are attacking you personally. Yeah. Yeah. True. It's a valid yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. It's just for although, um, although there was, I mean, yeah. I and and um, there was a there was a comment there by by Jonathan um, B Swift about you know about you buy a piece of art and. and that you love and someone says who puked on the wall and you're going to get a reaction. I, yeah, I, I kind of get, get that, but I mean, you can, you can still review a perfume less than positively and not be, and not be nasty about it. Maybe yeah. that's, that's where you can always tell that you can always tell some reviews, um, I'm, I've been guilty of this too, that where they, they're deliberately saying stuff to get to more, to get a reaction. They might still not, you know, they might not like the perfume, but they definitely, um, it feels like they're trying to get a reaction from people. And I've definitely done that in the past, in the past as well. Although I can't remember from which, um, and, uh, and making a stink, I think said that someone asked about bond number nine, um, and they said they, don't like that fragrance and I all that I've house. I've never but smelled anything. I do not <laughs> like this. I have no interest I, either. Yeah, I have never smelled anything I I liked from, from that house at all. Um so I'm I'll just keep an eye on the comments in case anyone brings up anything interesting. But I've wanted to ask you guys, and I know Michelle, you've you haven't been doing YouTube for long because you mentioned um as well about reviewing samples so i i think it i think you can take it for granted that like if i'm reviewing something that i have a bottle of there's a very very good chance that it's going to be a positive review but but this is why this is why i also do reviews from samples because obviously the sample can go either way it's going to be good good or bad um and it just reminded me that I once saw I once saw a, a comment somewhere. I can't remember if it was on YouTube or on Instagram about YouTubers shouldn't be using shouldn't be reviewing samples, or no one would watch, or they wouldn't watch a review with someone using a sample. Um, and I couldn't work out the logic of that because I don't know. Do you, can you possibly think of any reason why it's better to review from a bottle or not? Because yeah. I figure if I'm having, if I've got a bottle, it's going to be positive. Um, I, I could know. think of one possible uh, type of review, and that is when the review is focusing more on the packaging. Like some people are interested on how the atomizer works or yeah. how stable or sturdy the bottle is. Um, for me, I'm more interested in the actual smell of it. So that's not something yeah. I look into, but I do know there are people who think that that piece of information is important. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, just like Eve mentioned, you know, performance, right? Uh, projection and all of that stuff. Um, usually it's with the smell. I know, and I I, re I posted a, an Instagram story recently about uh, a Perfum Roma perfume that smelled really good. I just couldn't remember what it smelled like because it was gone in like two hours. Um, and, you know, I had some comments about, you know, the, the Dabba bottles are this way, which is understandable, um, but, yeah, I usually think about the smell first before most things. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe be, I guess with how I got into perfumes, um, it does impact what type of reviews I look for now. But when I was reading blogs early on before YouTube exploded with fragrances, um, I felt like a lot of the bloggers based their reviews on samples. Like that was a normal thing. Uh, so I didn't think it was a big deal when a YouTuber would do that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, I got that exact same impression when you read blogs from 
people like Kafkaesque and Bois de Jasmine and all these people, um, you, you just assumed that they might have been sent a sample from, from the house, um, but they, yeah. you certainly didn't get the impression they were being sent bottles because obviously YouTube being a visual medium, it's nice to show the presentation. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, like without, without going to getting into the whole free bottle thing, um, it seems like someone made a comment uh, yeah. there about, you know, reviewers wanting bottles sent. Um, to me, if you're reviewing a perfume, like the, it, it just makes sense that the most important thing is the smell. Um, and yes, I do understand people want to see uh, the bottle, but you can find pictures on the internet yeah. and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and when you when if, if you know if people like your perfume, they don't care about what the bottle looks like. They like the smell of it. Not yeah, yeah. What the bottle looks like. Well, look, I have no doubt that a lot of these influencers who demand the bottles, um, they if they like it, that's great. They get they get a free bottle of it. But uh, a lot of them, if they don't like it, they'll still give a positive review and then sell the bottle for profit. So uh, there is no, there, I'm a hundred percent sure that this is what happens. Um, so I have a question for you too. Um, and, and I was going to say, Michelle, um, because you haven't been on YouTube for that long, do you, have you guys, or Eve, have you developed or sort of made any rules that you stick to for for reviewing fragrances or you know posting videos just any general things because i'm curious about this because I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll share mine after after you guys but um i'm just curious about what other youtubers actually do as their process huh do you want to go oh. first michelle or <laughs> i'll go first because i have no strategy at all <laughs> uh, <laughs> so i've got nothing i'm actually just Kind of like navigating through how I'm going to go about, you know, between my blog and YouTube. So um, I'd love to hear what you, you guys think are doing. Yeah, go ahead, Eve. Oh, um, so you mean regarding like how how I choose to review something or okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just curious about this because I'm I'm guessing everyone is different and like yeah. it's just something that I that I think about with other with other YouTubers? Yeah, so I've decided for myself, and this isn't, you know, um, something that I think every YouTuber should do. So for me, I've decided that I will not accept um, full bottles from any brands or any stores, because knowing myself, um, that would definitely skew my review. And I'm the type of person who, if I'm sharing my opinion on something, I wanna make sure it's, very sincere and i know that getting something as expensive as uh, to me it's expensive like a full bottle um mm. getting something like that is going to skew how i'm going to talk about a fragrance when it comes to samples though because i've been trying to get free samples even before youtube i have no problems accepting that um discovery sets are a bit iffy because they can be pretty pricey but um for individual samples um i'm a lot more comfortable just not you know putting any uh, restrictions on what I'm going to say about a scent. Yeah, um, I'm I'm the same I'm the same Eve, especially with samples. So I'm happy to be sent samples of perfume, um, and usually uh, the people that send me samples uh, ask me for direct feedback and and, and not to post a video. Yeah on YouTube or on, or on Instagram. Um, and I, and I will say, you know, like if I like it, I'm going to, I'm going to say I, I like it. Um, but there's only been a couple of brands that have specifically contacted me, um, and said, can I send you some samples so you can, and post a, a review. And I've actually said, said no, because they've, because they've put that caveat on the end like said so i'll send you these samples and can you please review them like you know one of them one of them was um uh actually uh a few of you might be familiar with meleg perfumes um i had another one from instagram they're usually like startups um that have started out in social media and decided 
to make their own perfume brands. And, and so they're basically saying, I'd like you to smell um, if you want to post something, uh, that'd be great, blah, blah, blah. But, but I, but I refuse, I refuse those. Um, but like I said, I'm happy to get samples. I've got a bunch of samples that I haven't even tried uh, properly. So yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Well, sure. From sure. what you, from what you guys have said and from what I've heard or, you know, just discussions with other people on Instagram, I've noticed that yeah, yeah whenever there's like a certain, even if it says just, can you um, let us know how you feel about perfume? Whenever there's that kind of stipulation, there is that expectation that you would post something on, or, you know, somewhere, YouTube, wherever. Um, however, um, and with that being said, I, I don't feel comfortable accepting any samples from, you know, any companies that want to send me a, a perfume mm -hmm. with that comment in there. Just like, mm -hmm. hey, do you want to try out perfumes? Yes. Okay. I just want a sample. I don't want a full bottle either. Um, and just don't tell me to uh, give you any feedback. I'll just, I'll give, I'll give feedback regardless if I like yeah. it or not. Yeah. You know, I if I want I think, to. Yeah. I think they've got to, I think they, um, as long as they understand if they're sending a sample to me and I don't like it, I might still say I don't like, I don't like it. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and this comment that I've put up on the screen. So oh, Francesca, yeah. I think FB is referring to Francesca Bianchi. Oh, uh, that's full bottles. That's how I interpreted it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Sorry. We're uh, so used to FB, yes. <laughs> well, because, the, because I do, um, I am lucky enough to get a, sam a sample when Francesca Bianchi um, releases a new perfume. Uh, and no, I mean... She sends them to a, to I think obviously some brands have a list of people they send stuff to, uh, but uh, like you know I haven't reviewed everything. I think I've got Tiger Tiger, or I have got Tiger Tiger, but I am I'm not loving what I'm smelling <laughs> so far of, of Tiger Tiger, and it's just not to the taste of the other ones that I really like. But I haven't tested it properly enough to give a full opinion. My first impressions just don't, just weren't great. But yes, I do have, um, if it's referring to full bottles, um, I do have the same rules, yes. Yeah, I put that, um, I have an Instagram story that's a highlight on my Instagram page where it talks about my views, my personal um, restrictions on that. Um, I don't think it's explicit on my YouTube channel but it is on my Instagram page. Yeah, well, um, I, I think for me, it is definitely something to think about and per perhaps put in writing. Um, and that's, you know, that's really where I stand. Just, I'm, I'm really just not interested. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just, you know, if I want to try something, I'll get a free sample um, from, you know, my orders, you know, you just request mm -hmm. what you want um, and, or just order a sample set, especially from um, houses that offer that would give you, you know, some percentage off if you decide to get a full bottle. Um, but yeah, those sample sets get expensive, especially when you cannot pick and choose what you want. It's all like all together, it gets too much. Um, so, what one other point I wanted to also say, if we're talking about honesty and reviews, is um, I already know that there are certain brands I will not review because. I have a negative view on those brands or houses and that uh, will impact my uh, review, not so much in the positive direction, but giving it a negative review. Um, so th that's another thing that I've um, kind of decided to do for myself to avoid avoiding or to avoid reviewing certain brands. Yeah. And because, you know, sometimes even a negative review is just, you know, free, advertising for those companies yeah. so i yeah. would not i wouldn't even mention that i hate it so well that, that's another thing because um there are there are some reviewers who kind of have, uh, are on that side of if i would rather not give any publicity to something i didn't like and also and also is there is there a point where a brand is too small to get negative 
criticism where you might actually affect affect their business, I guess. To, Do you have any, any thoughts well, on that? If they're sending out free bottles, like, <laughs> that's, I don't know. That's just one point to think about. Yeah. But, um, uh, so yeah, is, I, if, is that only free bottles? Like, if what if they're sending free samples out? My view on samples oh, is, is, like, it's all, the whole point of a sample um in my view, is not even necessarily to sell those samples. They're, samples are there so you can test a product um, to see right. if you if you like it or yeah. not. So I, I think I think if you're sending samples out, um, you need to be ready for that that feedback in one form or another. Yeah, exactly, okay. and you know. It, it shouldn't really, it shouldn't really hurt your business, really, if you know someone doesn't like what you give out. And then, like you said, you should be ready for that kind of feedback as well. Yeah. Um. So this comment by the devil sent me, uh, and I know, I know he's. Um, this is this is. Well, I, it's not. I guess it's not complicated, but. Uh, so thoughts on receiving product without an agreement to review it. The, the intent, it was sent out, I'm just reading it out aloud so I, I'll have this clear in my head. In the first place is for advertising purposes. So anything produced featuring them should be labelled as such. Um, so I'm, I'll respond to that by saying, is there is there no circumstance where a brand that you might have um, some kind of, I guess, even just a friendly relationship with, if you get a gift from them, whether it be a travel size bottle or a full bottle or more samples, um, even though it's just sent, um, regardless of what you end up doing, whether you never mention it or not, it's still advertising. I don't know. I don't know. I and I haven't really made up my mind about that. I haven't either. I mean, I feel like for me personally, um, when when that happens to me, it, and it's happened uh, maybe a couple times, twice. Uh, I just kind of like have like this appreciation for the brand in general, and with an urge to perhaps maybe try something else, even if I didn't like what they sent. Um, and then in, in turn, if whatever else I try is something I like, then that turns into me talking about the brand, right? And then that turns into some form of um, mention or advertising for them. So it's like hit or miss. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, guys, I'm just reading through some of these comments in case I miss anything uh, important. Yeah, taste can change for sure. Uh, and I think yeah. I saw another um, comment from Amina about how to kind of word those negative reviews too. Uh, I, I know for me, I am very careful about giving something a negative review because I understand that fragrances are very subjective. Um, even things of, around longevity, which to me, I used to think it was a very objective thing to judge, but uh, after kind of hearing how things perform on differently on different people, I've realized how subjective it is. And so I kind of word it in that way when I do my reviews. Yeah. And then longevity, just like you said, is subjective to everyone. I mean, for me, it's four hours and up, you know, well, four hours mm -hmm. is good enough for me. Yeah. It could be yeah. It could be more for someone else. It could be much less for someone else. But, and that's why I don't really like talking about, you know, how much something stays on, you know. I, I, I'm, I will add to that, that I have, this hasn't happened for a while, unfortunately, but I have done reviews in the past from samples that were actually given to me by friends. Like someone said, here's a sample of this, try it. And I've done a review, and then um, the brand has happened to see see the review on YouTube, or I've posted something on Instagram, and and they've actually sent me something 
as a gift like uh, of appreciation i guess uh, so i've done the review and ended up with more more of the product i reviewed but yeah but it i don't know i can differentiate that because i did the review with no expectation i i had the sample of that and i've ended up with a free bottle um right. so and and i'm you know i wouldn't apologize for that but i'm yeah, yeah. It's I've, I've got some, yeah i've got something that i actually love and wanted um and if someone wants to give it to me for free then that's great uh all right uh, rich mitch whose video are you referring to oh uh, i think he and vives neck were having a oh uh, okay <laughs> all right okay oh. <laughs> people stop listening to us guys <laughs> um, I don't know. And, you, you guys do a great job with these lies because i can't even keep up with the comments <laughs> Well, that's usually why I try and invite someone on so I, I can do one thing at a time because <laughs> I can't <laughs> multitask. I can't do yeah, any of that. Yeah, um, can I just ask you too as well, what, uh, what's your process for actually reviewing a perfume? So if, you're, if you decide, um, all right, so for instance, El, El Atadin for today, um, like if I had only tried this once, I would, I would not have felt confident doing a review um usually i have to wear something at least you know at least over several months um which is why i'm very bad at doing you know like early reviews of anything that's come out because i need to test it for ages because without doubt the last time this the the test i do right before the review i'm going to smell something that i hadn't smelled previously before yeah. do you guys do anything similar yeah, I don't, I tend to, I, you know, I would post first impressions, um, usually on like a Instagram story, uh, which doesn't stay on really, it's just 24 hours. But yeah. before, before I say something about a perfume, it usually is at least a couple months at minimum. But yeah, to your point, it is important because different things smell, you know, changes, especially over the seasons too. Because yeah. there's been fragrances that I've tried in the summer or in the winter, and I tried it later, and I ended up liking it even more or just disgusted by it. So, yeah, um, for for me, I do have. I kind of give me at least four tests before I talk about it, um, and I do more than four if, like out of the four, it changed a little bit. And my opinion has changed. Sometimes I'll test up to 10 times. And then I just keep a spreadsheet with my notes, uh, just seeing how my opinions have changed over time. Um, I don't know if I go over like several months, uh, I do try to do it over um, at least several weeks, just to see how my opinions might change over time. But um, I, I like the idea of going over several months, though, because with the seasons changing and weather changing that could make an impact on how it will smell yeah um yeah so it, yeah. it's uh, i because i'm always a bit wary of watching or watching or reading a review of something that's only just come out and and in some cases i know how long they i know how long they've had the scent for and i just wonder how they can yeah. do a review like uh, you know a thorough review um based on it which is really should be just a first impression you know a very first impression so sailor boy is asking how else are brands to promote new fragrances um are we really are we really only limited to sending free product out like uh, I don't know i'm not a marketing person <laughs> either so i'm i'm asking anyone on here do you like what other ways I, I mean I like I said samples are fine all right that's what that's what samples are for um, right. so to answer that question you can promote with samples send samples out um, right. I know I know chronotope um, and Francesca Bianchi they sent samples to specific people um, and and I can tell you categorically with chronotope he he sent me samples and I've still, I've been wearing them and I haven't said I'm going to review anything yet. Um, and he has no expectations. That's one example, but, but 
I think because of that word of mouth, um, especially on Instagram, is very, very important. Like, uh, I don't follow any big influencers on Instagram, so all the perfumes I hear about are, are you know, people like oh, most wow. of the guys on here and you two. Um, so yeah, that to definitely. me, that to me is one way to do it without. Sorry if I'm hogging Without too much. Full too bottles. Much of this topic. Yeah. <laughs> but like when when I see a brand send full bottles out and dozens of them, the first thing that comes to my mind is who's paying for these bottles? <laughs> yeah. Some big it's the, it's the person <laughs> it's the person who's gonna buy it, who's gonna pay full retail. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and to Eve's point, you know, getting like a full size bottle does you know, it, you know, even though you're not conscious of it, it does skew your um, how you talk about perfume, you know, versus a sample. So, yeah, samples are great. I've I heard about certain, a lot of small houses just from, you know, the few people that I follow um, on Instagram. So, yeah, sending out sam like small sample vials <laughs> do does, you know, help. Yeah. Um, Gunmetal mentions Sunday Smells. I follow her on Instagram as well, and I love her reviews um, in her stories as well. So if you're on Instagram, follow Sunday. Um, yeah, but she's, she's, yeah cool. she's, she's great. She may, she may be very harsh to something that you like. <laughs> yeah, I know some people have gotten quite upset at some of her reviews, but oh, well. it's her opinion. I, I appreciate yeah. them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I really do. Yeah. Um, all right, so I think I've got uh, Bubby. Oh, hang on, let me just show this. Um, what is my most concise description of the term animalistic? Like versus animalic? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think probably I'm going to assume he means the same thing. Yeah. The most concise description, um, something something that smells hang on I, I need to try and be concise here uh <laughs> something that smells unconven uh unconventionally unpleasant is that right no it's like pleasant. it goes against conventions yeah. with how yeah it yeah um but it doesn't have to literally smell like an animal it just has to smell uh, less than clean, I guess. Less than what people would consider clean. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know. It's not a very good, concise explanation. But when animalic can be applied to spices, it can be applied to animal products. It could be implied to some floral notes. Um, anything that make anything that might make you blush can be animalic. <laughs> So I guess I guess cumin could come up as I yeah, know, like, yeah. I, I does have that. that. Like, so, like I said, that cumin smells like <laughs> a sweaty teenage boy sometimes, and I only know because I live with one, not not for any other reasons. <laughs> so Eve, Eve was Eve was saying that there was a there would be a difference between animalistic versus animalic. That's my opinion. Um, yeah. Um, well, you, t what do you mean by that though, Eve? I just yeah. so. I, I don't know. It's just like uh, just vocabulary, really. But yeah. I guess if we're talking about a spectrum of how <laughs> skanky something can be, um, animalic is on the more extreme side. Animalistic is just like a slight hint. That, that's how I have really define those two terms. But like, I yeah, don't that, know. That, like a... that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, slightly yeah, unclean yeah, body. Yeah, that's absolutely. that's yeah. That's kind of perfect, yeah. Amina. Yeah. Like yeah, it, I there's a lot of you know a lot of perfumes I describe as animalic. Pretty much usually are smelling like a human uh, in in some in some form. I there's no perfume I've ever smelled that's actually reminded me of a particular animal. Like there's some there are some products that. Um, can smell furry, um, but usually, usually it's it's something that you you're already familiar with, whether it's your own smell or somebody else's yeah. smell, or like you know if you haven't given your dog a grooming and yeah, yeah. 
best. What perf- what perfume do you have that's like that, Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> I- <laughs> okay, um, so one that I actually so I, at the I think it's called Golden Ambergris by Anonym. Ah. Oh. No. <laughs> have you? Have it's you got actually. A it's, I did. I got a bottle because it had a Black Friday sale, but I love that scent. I really do. Oh. Um, for short periods of time, it's very interesting to me. Um, but I cannot wear, it, especially if I wear it over three hours, and then I start like doing some work and I start sweating. It's, oh no. <laughs> No. So small doses of that one. Only. Very small doses, yeah. <laughs> Just keep it around somewhere, maybe on my wrist, like, like yeah, yeah. Sniff. <laughs> um, yeah, Bond, if Bond number no. nine Wall Street smells like a wet dog, a wet dog smell is one of my least favorite smells in the whole world. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know what it is about wet dogs, but they just yuck. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, okay. I'm just I'm just checking to see if we've missed any questions, specific questions. So Gunmetal says he doesn't get the BO from cumin. Um, and if you, I guess if you eat a lot of it, you probably would, you know, feel that it doesn't. Um, I I don't think it smells exactly like BO because BO is a bit repulsive and cumin is not to me and. I think there are probably other elements to real bo that are, that are absent in um, in cumin. I guess it depends on the kind of uh, bo too, because I you know just from reading, um, stress sweat smells different than like pleasure smells. Ah. So oh. I guess it depends on what kind. That's I, a good I, I, point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes that makes sense though. That does that make sense? Um, I. Uh, I have a little bit of uh, uh, not real civet tincture, um, guys, but I have a like synthetically reconstructed civet uh, tincture, and yeah. yes, it does. It does smell like it does stink like something bodily and and unholy. But <laughs> it's but those type of smells are like some in some way almost addictive. I I don't know. I don't want to make the, I don't want to make the analogy of people smelling their own farts and that that kind. Of, <laughs> but but there is that type. There is mean. that kind of there is that kind of uh, addictiveness about smells like that. <laughs> it's so strange. It's true because you know sometimes some of those farts actually are smell fine. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, someone who eats healthy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So over the balanced diet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and life through her lens, always, always um, picking the right words to describe. Uh, oh, this is interesting. So Chet saying, when you tattoo people, their skin releases odors. Oh, oh, that's ah. interesting. I guess that, that must- does explain why different scents smell differently on other people too. So. Yeah, we well that's absolutely true. That that's why um what what has been oh, I've got a question for both of you. What's been um and anyone watching if they want to if they want to type um what's been a perfume that you have smelled and you just did not like on yourself but you smelled on somebody else and absolutely loved. Has that happened to you? Yeah. Yeah, so many times. I feel like a lot of things smell better than my husband. It's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> it's really annoying. Like, like perfumes that you bought for yourself, Eve? Like, uh, it's, and- well, no, there, some of them were samples. Um, what was it? Doson from Deptique. Yeah. I don't like how that smells on me. But for some reason, um, maybe because it was less symbolic on my husband, it smelled better on him. <laughs> I'm taking a screenshot of I'm taking a screenshot of this, Amina. I'm She's not wrong. She's I'm not wrong. On Instagram. <laughs> um, um, did, you, did you have a perfume like that, Michelle? Yeah, oh. I do. For me, uh, it's that Santal 33 by Lilabo. Oh. I, I cannot, I can't stand it on myself, but everyone that I've complimented on their perfume, like you smell really good what you're wearing, has told me. A lot of people actually um, sent out 33. I'm like, God damn it. 
<laughs> it smells I, like pickles on me. I don't know if you got yeah, that. Yeah, I don't remember. I just remember not liking it. And I don't I hate pickles too, so well. And I, I've never smelled I've never smelled that pickle note in Santal 33. And but and I have nothing against Santal 30, 33, except that I, I feel like it's always a much better room fra fragrance than a than a personal fragrance. Um I just right. like the smell, but I like like you guys, I uh, unlike you guys, I've never smelled that pickle note. Um, I used to have uh, Paco Rabanne Invictus in my early fragrance wearing days. Um, and after a while, I just couldn't stand it on my skin anymore. And then some months later, I, I, I was at a, um, a family gathering and my cousin smelled amazing. And I said to him, what, what have you got? Oh, and he said, I'm, I've just got Invictus. And oh, okay. I said, Hi. <sighs> what am I doing? Yeah, someone at uh, Gunmetal asked, um, is Santal 33 popular? I think it is. It is. A lot of my friends wear it. Um, and I just think it's well, I, I I still smell it out. But like I said, I think a lot of stores actually use it as a store fragrance. And when you walk past... When you walk past the stores, you can actually smell it um, coming out onto the street. Yeah, I, I heard it's the scent of New York too. So, ah, okay. like a lot of people in New York smell like that. Ah. I think here people mostly use Rose Thirty One as like store sprays, um, or like when I walk by some stores, they use that more often than Santal Thirty Three. I wonder if that's a thing with La Labo um, fragrances that they're. Are they perfect room sprays? Yeah, maybe they are. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't describe patchouli twenty four as a as a good room spray. Room spray, but it's just me. Um, oh, I don't know if you guys have a, any nominations for this question. Skankiest. Skankiest. I think mine is more because it was probably the first skanky perfume I've tried. Um, it was. Kingdom from Alexander McQueen. I don't know if you two have tried that one. That one's very cumin heavy and it also had this celery seed smell, um, but it's supposed to smell like basically an orgy, like a lot of body parts. <laughs> so. Okay. Do you have a number? Yeah. What, what, is that, that's the Kingdom from Alexander McQueen, right? I'm taking notes. <laughs> I, it might be hard to find now because I think they discontinued it. Okay. So good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so? In addition to the golden ambergris, it, it would have been won by Strange Love New York. And it's their ambergris mm. perfume. It's it smelled like um if you go to like a seafood market, like a full-on seafood market, and you smell them, yeah, just the way it smelled. It's just metallic and just like poop. Yeah. Talk I, and so, um, <laughs> I, is that um, the Strange Love? Uh, that's one house that I haven't sampled only because it's not really available here. But it's also, from the looks of it, really expensive. Um, but I'm yeah. curious to try to try some of those. Um, Everything else was fine. Just yeah, uh, that one. Uh, making a stink, saying must. Musk Kubla Khan. I've only smelled oh. that once, and I do remember it being pretty stanky, um, yeah. but in a, in a nice in a nice way. I have to I'm say, curious about that one too. I yeah, uh, I think that that one is in the is, is in the tall black packaging now instead the, of oh the drug. skyscraper one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I the the one that I own and that I actually wear that I think to me is the skankiest is and some people don't smell the smell this much um is lover's tale by francesca bianchi um i remember the first time i sprayed that on uh and it's only really in the opening it smells like anal sex gone wrong um it's just it's just <laughs> like got it just hit. It Doesn't hits it you. always go wrong? <laughs> I've heard. I've heard. I've only heard. Sure. Um, 
Um, <laughs> took a turn. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to monetize this video. <laughs> well, that, that's pretty much, that, that is pretty much the, the skankiest one that I own and, and still wear, although, you know, like I've gotten past the hard part. Uh, yes, Amina, he is yeah. talking about Lover's Tale. Yeah. Lover's Tale. Yeah. I actually oh, you know, get, you I know get too, that with Lover's Tale. I actually really, it, it smells very, I guess, it, more pleasant to me, more sweet, not quite like how you described. <laughs> you just get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I got what you mean, though, Pep, because I think when I reviewed it with Amina, we both agreed that it had this butt accord. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> That's what it smells like. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're all exposing yourselves now. <laughs> yeah. Life through uh, life through her, her lens mentioned Salome um yeah. as skanky oh. for sure. I love that perfume. Yeah, I and I I see that's one where to me that's mainly there's a lot of cumin in that one that I can smell, but it's with all that jasmine, it kind of just ends up being yeah. beautiful cloud, yeah. Uh, see, Amina gets pungent floral from Lover's Tale, so we all get different things. Yeah, uh, it is yeah. Lover's Tale, T A I L. <laughs> yes, oh, <correct>. tail. <laughs> interesting. Oh, Someone my goodness. Said, uh, Amber Kanjaga by Unmit Nomad, which is a house I mm. really love too. Um, and I love that perfume, but I don't get um. I get it a little, but it's just it's it kind of it's kind of like uh, with everything that's going on with all the spices, I don't quite smell the the skanky skank. Oh, okay. I I haven't I haven't even really heard of this house. Uh, is it fairly new, or has it been around for a while? Um, I don't know how long they've been around, but um, I can't tell you. But they've been around for some time. Who does Oud Maximus, um, guys? Do you? It's uh, Botnikov. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. I'm not yeah, trying to find this smelly one. <laughs> yeah. And, look, and I have to say, it, it is really. Like barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which one? Oud, Oud Maximus? Yeah, yes. Oh, it's okay. Like, oh, a lot of like meaty meats, like burning meat. Oh, okay. Huh. All right. Um, uh, I'll just see if there's anything else. I think um, that we've gone over an hour now, so it might be a good yeah. time to say thanks to everybody and wrap up. Uh, let me just see. My, do you, do you guys have you guys smelled my from Bogue? Oh yeah, and I haven't yes. smelled. It's it's really good. I, right. I enjoy it. Yeah. I, I don't actually get I, – I get that it's, you know, has some kind of dirty bits, but when people say Uranus, I naturally just assume it smells like piss, basically, and I don't, <laughs> I don't, get, I don't get that. <laughs> I don't get that much from Maya. I really liked it, though. Yeah, it reminds me of Salome, actually. Yeah, yeah. I find Salome a bit smoother than, than Maya. I don't, I don't know. Um oh what uh what are your thoughts on Bald Afrique by by Rado? Bald I freak. Was that <laughs> Bald I freak. That's great. I haven't smelled on a long time after it really Yeah. It. I don't I remember know. liking it. I just remember being it being pretty pleasant, um nice, uh, but then I guess probably not worth what the price of the Byredos were, that's yeah. all. Yeah, same here. Uh, all right. Well, then I'm going to say um, thank you to you two, Eve and Michelle, for gracing this channel with your presence. I've, it's been heaps and heaps of fun, um, and we should do it again, definitely. Yeah. And we yeah. could even do it on your channels, perhaps. Um, and thank you to everyone who came on and commented and made me smile and made us laugh with your comments. Uh, I hope no one got offended with anything that I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I did. Um, and uh, 
Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. You so Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. You Bye. too. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.